economic development corporation has aimed to stimulate and influence the process of economic development, improve the quality of life, and raise the standard of living in Schuylkill County for its community and its residents. With this in mind, Senko is proud to be the inaugural co-sponsor of Ford Ignite School because entrepreneurship profoundly impacts economic development in numerous ways, such as driving innovation, generating employment, and fostering competition. Programs like Ignite Schoolkill, which are designed to foster the growth of future businesses through various avenues, is one of the keys to long-term economic development success in Schuylkill County. That said, on behalf of SEDCO, I want to congratulate the final four businesses for all their hard work and effort to this point. I wish you all the best of luck tonight and in the future. Thank you. I'd like to thank the, the, all the Ignite uh, contestants, local community leaders, supporters and the final contestants, and especially a room full of advocates for the success of Schuylkill County. Thank you for all coming to support this great idea and to promote the future entrepreneurs of this area. Tonight I'd like to give some brief comments to all the contestants and the finalists from the judge's perspective. First and foremost, let me tell you, every single contestant in the Ignite program blew us away with the time, effort, attention to detail, and all the time you put in, and I think you all deserve a big round of applause. I'm gonna go off script here. You did a fantastic job with this group, and it was very impressive, and the time and commitment that you put in was, was absolutely off the charts. Thank you, Tom. After fine-tuning these business plans, you all stood in front of the judges in a room and did an exceptional job explaining your business models and also getting grilled from all the judges. Uh, literally all these people, all these businesses spent about an hour uh, presenting their plan and basically the, the seven of us just grilled them with questions and I don't know many of us in a room that could handle uh, that kind of pressure but they did absolutely exceptional the questions um, that we asked. Um, all of you stood there like champions and truly did exceptional. You should be very proud of yourselves. What all of you already accomplished is something that very few will ever do. That would be the commitment to start your own business. I know it was scary making this commitment and the unknown, and, and always what the unknown is, but so many of you did this program to start to finish, and regardless of how this turns out this evening, all of you will be in a better position in the future, in business, and especially in life from this experience. There's a saying I heard many years ago, and I say it to myself on a daily basis. It's not the pursuit of happiness. The happiness is in the pursuit. This should ring true with all of you in this competition. You might not realize it now, but the progress, the progress that you are going through are the things that you will never forget. So please enjoy this pursuit and every milestone you pass along the way. In closing, please know that many mistakes will be made along the way. You will come to endless forks in the road, and, be, and this will make the roadmap of your business success and even failures. Being in business for yourself will never get easier, but will change. But what will change is you continue to get stronger and stronger and better and better at your business craft. For myself and all the judges, we wish you all the best tonight, and we look forward to hearing your presentations one last time. To Mr. Savas Longafinis. Good evening. Um, thank you, Bob, and thank you to the chamber. The Chamber Foundation um, and the staff at the Chamber, this program would not have been possible without the great support from them, um, the donors, the companies that have assisted us, many mentors, uh, subject matter expert teachers who have come through the program and helped, um, my project managers, Denise Klinger and Masako, and most importantly, the contestants. So building a small business ecosystem in Schuylkill County, um, you know, is something I'm very passionate about as an entrepreneur myself, because entrepreneurship is hard. There's not a book that just tells you how to be an entrepreneur. Um, it's one of the hardest things there is, especially to get started. With that said, we start with 11 aspiring entrepreneurs. Seven finished the program. And those were the interviews that Bill talked about. They delivered a business plan. They delivered a pro forma, which is a financial forecast for 36 months of their business. And they also delivered startup costs. That could be property acquisition, 
improvements to real estate, purchase of furniture, fixtures, and equipment, FF&E, and other items, signing leases, uh, investor contracts. They went through that process in six months. Ford made it to the final after those hour-long interviews, um, but of the 11 that started, I'm happy to say that I believe that six or seven, including all four this evening, will be in business in the next 12 months in Schuylkill County. So you should give them a round of applause for that. Tonight, the judges have a very difficult job. They'll be judging based on four criteria. The positive impact the business can have on the community at large and the local economy, the perceived need for the business in the county, the potential positive impact on tax revenue, and also the proven or perceived ability to financially create and sustain the business. There are some metrics with that. We'd like to see them open within the next 12 months. We'd like to see the, the business be sustained for a minimum of five years. This is a grant, it's $100,000. There's a clawback clause to it, where 20% is forgiven every year of that $100,000. And, and what that means is, um, if unfortunately they were to go out of business, we wouldn't look to collect, but we want them to thrive. And if by chance they sell their company for an uh, extensive amount of money, they would be they will be required to pay back that grant, but this is a grant um, and it goes towards your business, which you will see some of the financials this evening. Um, so I'm looking forward to our high school program. As Bob mentioned in, in your program in front of you, um, there's a QR code where um, if you feel compelled, you can donate. We'll be giving away $25,000 in scholarship. We're working with all 14, I think it is, school districts in Schuylkill County. Um, my team and I have been visiting the, the districts already, and we have nine meetings set up in the first three weeks um, in September to go visit every district in the county. So we're excited to get that. Um, with that said, I'm going to turn it over to our MC tonight. Um, you all know him, the best MC in the room, uh, Mr. John Powers. You may remember me from the last time we did this. Uh, we have an amazing event downtown Pottsville for something very similar. Uh, not the same, obviously it was a little more Pottsville centric, this is more county centric. But the most important thing to remember, as Silas mentioned, an ecosystem. And when I think about events like this, you know, communities have banks, hospitals, manufacturing facilities, and they're all so critical to the infrastructure to get people to come. But nobody really moves to a town because, wow, there's a really great hospital nearby. Unless they work in the hospital, of course, and that's nothing against hospitals. They come here for the sizzle, not the steak, right? So they're here for the extra things. They're coming to visit, they're coming to live for everything else that goes with that as a support community. They come for affordable housing. They come for a really nice place to stay on the weekend if they're visiting the brewery, if they're visiting somebody in town. Uh, you know, affordable, fresh food uh, that's available that's delicious and healthy, right? Restaurants. These are things that get people to come to Pottsville, to Schuylkill County, to Monoy City, to Coldale, to Tamaqua, everywhere. Uh, if you don't have these things, people just won't be here. We don't have a thriving ecosystem without it. And, you know, we saw from the last one, what do we end up with? An unbelievable uh, entertainment center, uh, you know, for axe throwing and, and having a drink and hanging out with your friends. We see a skate shop that's thriving. We see an event center that is just unbelievable that I've already been to three or four events at uh, for similar things like this. And that all came from this design of saying, let's take an idea and let's, let's not just let somebody try to work this out on their own. Let's let the community help us out, right? We have too many good people in this room that know more than people that are just starting out in a lot of cases. And, and your help is so important and it's appreciated. And the most important people in, in the room tonight are the ones that have the hardest job, uh, the judges, and I never uh, agree to be a judge. So thank you for doing that. We're going to introduce our judges real quickly. Uh, first of all, the legendary Dave Snyder of Setco. <laughs> Next up we have Seth Kubler from Senator Dave's Arnold's office. We have Bill Metzinger, who you've already met from Metz Properties. We have attorney Lori Guzik from Williams from Freeburg and Jones. Micah Gursky from the St. Luke's University Health Network. We have Tammy Weiss Joseph from DG Gingling and Son. And last but not least, of course, our perennial judge, 
for everything that gets judged. <laughs> Joe Drazd is the third of Drazd is in Sun Downtown. Oh, this time I wear glasses, because uh, I'm older and I need them. All right. So tonight what you're going to hear are four presentations. So they are four finalists, right? So there were more people involved. There is so much more to this than you see here tonight. Uh, this is the culmination of what has come before it, months and months and months and hours of work. Uh, so we are looking at a one-time single winner, no one's splitting the pot on this one, of $100,000 that will go home with one of these four contestants, we'll call them tonight to make it a little more like a game show. But they've worked really hard to get here, so what I'd ask first, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, tonight, you will actually be watching a recording. Uh, my wife and I were blessed with our fourth child on Saturday. So, due to the stress of that, um, with the stress of that and realizing the due date and proximity to tonight, uh, we did pre record the presentation. So, I hope you enjoy. All right. Hi, everyone. We are very excited to share with you our business venture. Rosalia Hotel, a boutique hotel that will be located in downtown Hawksville. My name is Hannah, this is my husband Nick. Together we currently own a marketing company and we are both born and raised here in Hawksville, PA. Our goal in these next 15 minutes is to really share with you how much of a need and a demand there is for a hotel in our area and how much of a positive impact it's going to have on both our small business owners and local economy. What we've discovered is happening is that businesses and tourists all have to stay out of the area due to the lack of lodging. Businesses are doing all their staff trainings, meetings, events, either at one of their other branches or outside the area where they can find adequate lodging and conference rooms. Tourists are coming to the area for events and attractions, but again, due to the lack of lodging or staying outside of the area, oftentimes Brackville aren't though. We want to keep our local businesses local. We want to drive tourists to this area and be able to host them here locally. That is going to have a massive impact on this community. As we continue to revitalize both Hospital and Schuylkill County as a whole, we really believe that having an adequate lodging in this area is a significant piece of that puzzle. Our solution to that problem <laughs> is Rosalia Hotel. It will be located on Center Street in downtown Pottsville in the Old Miners National Bank. It will include 25 rooms, a cocktail lounge, a cigar lounge, conference rooms, and a venue slash event space. If you have not been to our bank yet, really the main focal point is that lobby when you first walk through those doors. We're really going to be leveraging that to help us stand out from our local competitors, which are all commercial based hotels. That picture in the bottom right hand corner, that is the back side of the building. That is where all of our lodging will be, all of our hotel rooms. This is quite a large project, so to get to market as fast as possible, we'll be opening by phase. In phase one will be the cocktail lounge, the venue space, and the cigar lounge. Expected construction is this November and open next March. Phase two will be the hotel rooms and the conference rooms. Expected construction is this November. Expected open is next November. For phase one, it includes the cocktail lounge. Depicted here on the left is the space for that cocktail lounge. Hannah is going to describe the concept that we would like to utilize this space for in the next slide. A bar and restaurant called The Villa. The villa is a four-level multi-use building that will include dining service, private event spaces, and alcohol sales. It is located in Coldale, PA, an area that is currently underserved. The villa will be the only full-service restaurant in town, and the only other eatery is a small pizza shop. Our first floor will contain our lounge with dark boards, pool tables, skill game machines, and seating for guests, while our main restaurant will be located on our second floor. Um, we will have Polish and Italian food, and we will have um, as many services as possible so that we can please the public. Um, so as for me, I, I said hospitality, what does that mean? So I, I started out with fast food. I did, you know, kitchen, very fast big service, open and closing shifts. But I also went on to working in catering and fun dining. Um, from there, I, I had um, gotten experience in training and managing other team members and delegating tasks. But, um, you know, just working in uh, the back of house as well as the front of house and uh, dealing with um, patrons face-to-face -face and in person. 
I also do have experience in running a real estate development company with my fiance. Um, we're here in Schuylkill County. We've been here four years, and we try to pick up as many blighted homes and kind of turn them into something that is livable and we move beautiful families into town. So where are we? We're in Coldale, as I said before. Coldale is located between Tamaqua and Lansford. Um, so we're located at 2201 West Royal Street in Coldale. It is right down the street from the State Miners campus, and it's about 0.2 miles um, off 209. So as for the history of this building, it was owned and operated by the Trudich family for about 90 years. Um, they had had a hotel at one point, which then, um, upon the passing of Peter's mother, he decided to open the Viennese Villa, which I'm sure many individuals here have um, been a patron to and enjoyed time at. Um, he was a really great host and he made people feel welcome. So the Viennese Villa was a regular meeting spot. So our goal here is to really bring that back to the community while also paying homage to the Trudich family and what they have done. This, uh, the photo on top is actually Pete in our main dining room. Uh, I don't know how old he is in it. I don't know when it was taken, but um, that's him. And I would love to pay homage to everything he has done. As I said before, we have two main venues. So we're gonna have the lounge. That's the photo um, on top. Um, lounge, we're gonna have bar bites, the skill game machines, we're gonna do the dart boards, pool tables, we wanna do the leagues, and we also will have seating. I know it's not in that photo there, but we will have seating for guests to enjoy the bar bites, or just to chat or play a game with um, other people they would like to hang out with. Um, there will also be alcohol sales and tobacco sales in this portion of the building, and I do wanna stress that it is um, a separate entrance and not accessible from the restaurant for five or four patrons. So they would be required to um, exit the lounge and go into the entrance you see. Uh, I've been doing real estate in Google County for two years now, and uh, a lot of this presentation is uh, a result of, of the different problems that we've, you know, seen throughout the areas that we've been investing in, and uh, you know, with the intention of wanting to bring some new and innovative solutions to Google County. So, uh, without further ado, Homebox reimagining affordable living. So, what is Homebox now? Of course, we have one out there, but just as a brief introduction, Homebox, we're imagining how ship containers can be used in everyday life differently than just having on cargo ships, right? So these are single-use containers that come from Asia. They are not corroded, they are not rusted. They do not fit the graffiti stereotype that you might think of when you think of shipping containers. Uh, and that's why we chose them, because they are strong, they are waterproof, and they are set for 10 to 15 years of lifespan on the high seas. So you can imagine sitting you know, in one spot without being rustled around and, and hit with the uh, waves what they can actually last, which we're hoping is, is a good 20 to 30 years. Each home box unit really combines a minimalist design uh, and, and tries to introduce as much functionality in the small space as possible. So I know, you know it might seem like it's a small space, 160 square feet, but when you get in there, you really realize it's, it's uh, not much smaller than what you find in a college farm, to be honest with you, with all the amenities of having uh, a small house. Uh, the nice thing about this is we're also doing movement ready. So instead of us saying, well, we're going to give you an unfurnished unit, we're going to expect you to go out and buy beds and furniture that's going to fit exactly with the structure, we're bringing that off the table. It's not out there currently just because I wanted to give you some standing room, but uh, we definitely are planning to have a, a fully furnished and fully functional unit on delivery. Uh, our five main uh, pillars that we're focused on for home is building them quickly, pulling them anywhere, and I do mean anywhere except for underwater and underground. Uh, easily maintainable, affordable, and moving right. And uh, the, the goal here is, of course, to bring affordable housing back to uh, Schuylkill County because you know, we say affordable housing, but uh, I'm 24 years old, and a lot of my friends will not be able to have a house until they have two income streams in the household. And so this gives people an opportunity uh, to have a third option other than living at home with parents after college or uh, getting into a, either a rental or a mortgage that they can't afford. All right, so let's take a look at it. Uh, this is an overview photo of our 200 series, which is just a fancy way of saying 20 foot unit. Uh, it's 20 feet long, of course, we insulate the walls and we insulate the ceiling and the floor, so we are stuck with a little bit less than 18 feet. Uh, but that space does give us a lot of room to do uh, more than you think. So uh, we have our toilet, our sink, our standing shower, a washer dryer, full size. Uh, we have our kitchen sink. Uh, in this case, it looks like a cooktop, but we have a, a pull-out cooktop that we can plug in so we can maximize countertop space. 
Uh, we have a uh, over the range uh, microwave and then of course our refrigerator. Uh, now if you notice here, uh, this is actually a pretty nifty thing. I wish I could have had space to show you tonight. Uh, it is a four shelf uh, piece of furniture that actually comes out and folds into a table. So it, it's the first, basically a Murphy table. Uh, and then two stools that slide underneath it just right so that we have a, a max amount of uh, floor space there for cooking and using the kitchen and the laundry area. Uh, that is a full size bed and this is all the scale. Uh, so that bed gives enough room to have a TV mounted on the wall, a little bit of space here for you know, uh, storage if needed, and then our main split unit uh, mounted on the rear of it. So. So, the judges, with the hardest job known to man, have deliberated and they have come back with an answer. Now, this contest here uh, is different from a lot in that we said there were many more contestants even that you've met this evening that all have great ideas. Uh, it was narrowed down to four. And I think the greatest thing about these four is all four of these groups are going to succeed. Uh, there is no doubt in my mind that these four ideas make it, uh, these four places open. We are going to get to go to all these places and utilize all of this stuff uh, that they have shown us here tonight. But there has to be a winner. And we are not splitting tonight. We are not saying, boy, everybody was kind of worth 25%. That's just not how it worked. Uh, so these judges had the really hard decision of coming up with one winner. And we do have that one winner. I don't have the envelope though. <laughs> Silas, was there an envelope? I don't think there was an envelope. I'll just have to say it. So, for the first time in the history of an entrepreneurial contest, a four-day-old baby named Titus has won 100 